Hello everyone, the Lord be with you and also with you. We walk in the world, but we are not of the world. Many of us are venturing back more and more into the world after lockdown. And of course, lots of people have been back at work for some months now, and some have never stopped working. The world is still there with all the beauty that God created for us, but also with all the corruption, the crime, the sin that we have brought into it. In today's reading from Ephesians, Paul challenges us to walk through this world without deviating from the path of following Jesus. So let me read Ephesians 5 verses 1 to 8. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure or greedy person, such a man as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus also speaks to us about living as his followers in the world. In Matthew's gospel, he says to us, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. And again, he says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus is saying that we of, as Christians are to go out there affecting the world, changing the world. We affect it, but it should not affect us. That's the challenge. How is it that we can enter this world without allowing it to affect us? One way of doing it would be to live the life of a hermit, to shut oneself up and barricade oneself against the sinful world outside. We just about did that, didn't we? Did you find it much easier to live a Christian life during lockdown? In some ways, I did. I didn't have to face difficult people or difficult situations or make many choices. I could just spend my time quietly at home spending more time in prayer and reading the Bible and other spiritual books, spending quiet time with the Lord. I think I might have been quite content as a hermit, but perhaps that's just an older me <coughs> speaking. I wanted a bit more action when I was younger. But be that as it may, Jesus clearly requires us to go out into the world. How can we be the salt of the earth or the light of the world when we are hiding at home? And so we go back to that challenge. How do we live in the world? 
How do we act to change it without letting it change us? And Paul gives us an answer to that. Notice that first verse again. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children. Let's just have a look at that word, therefore. Therefore what? Therefore why? Paul is reminding us that the actions he calls us to are based on what God has already done for us. In view of the fact that all of us as Christians have been chosen by God before the foundation of the world, have been redeemed by him through the sacrifice of Christ, have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit and have been made alive by him, adopted as his children and are now part of the body of Christ. We, therefore, are consequently to live in a certain and specific way. We, therefore, are to be imitators of Christ. And this is the way in which we are to live in the world, as imitators of God. Those of you who are parents will know what it is like when your children follow your example, walk in your footsteps, look up to you as their guide and mentor. And that is what we are supposed to do, to walk in the way of the Lord, to follow his example, to attempt to be like him. There are many, many verses in the Bible about walking in the way of the Lord. Here is just one from Isaiah chapter 30, verse 31. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. We must keep to that straight path and not be tempted to veer to the left or to the right. How often do I, how often do you veer from obediently walking with God, tempted to pursue what I want instead of seeking his ways? We see God's way lived out through his son, Jesus. And so just let's turn to the gospel and read about the life of Jesus. Listen to the good news proclaimed in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, reading verses 10 to 17. Glory to Christ our Saviour. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled, <coughs> crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. And then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites, don't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise Christ our Lord. As I read this, I was filled with a sense of Jesus' love and compassion for people. The laws of the Sabbath were not important compared to the healing of a suffering woman. Isn't this how we should live our lives in this world? Amen. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, through your Holy Spirit, help us to live as the salt of the earth. Help us to live in a way that gives glory to you. Help us to walk in your way. Lord, we are so often tempted to go our own way. When this happens, we pray that we will hear the voice of your Spirit bringing us back to you. There is so much wrong with our world, Lord, for which we ask forgiveness. May the way we live our lives shed your light in the world around us, even if it is in just a small way. But we know that you can use us to do things that on our own we couldn't even dream of. And so we pray that our lives as followers of Christ will have an impact on the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, as numbers around the world, especially in Europe, are rising again, let us pray for the COVID collect. God, bless the world. Give it wisdom at this time. Grant us relief and release. Be with those who are ill and bless the carers fighting this pandemic. Amen. So let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let's share the grace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen. We pray together the prayer for Africa. God bless Africa, protect our women and children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love and for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Goodbye. Lots of love. See you next time.
Thank you.